Hey guys, this is my new tutorial on how to make power-ups and how to spawn the power-ups at random locations. By the end of this tutorial, you will learn how to make a power-up and then detect collisions from it and then spawn the power-up at random locations in your screen. So let's get started. Alright, so at first we'll be making the power-up scene. So let's select other node here and then add an area 2D. Let's name this power up. Now we're going to add a child, a sprite, and we're going to add one more child of the area 2D that is the collision shape 2D. Um, we're going to set the collision shape later. Let's save the scene. All right, now what we have to do is add a script. Let's create a variable first. Now that is velocity, which will be a vector to quantity. And we'll create one more variable which is going to be the sprite size which will be an integer now we're going to export both of these variables basically what export does is it allows you to edit your variables right from the inspector so this is much more easier to edit certain values like velocity and sprite size on the go. All right, let's go back to the script. And in the process function, we're going to translate the velocity times delta. And we're going to add an if statement here if the position of the power up of the y coordinate minus sprite size is greater than or equal to our viewports y coordinate and then we're gonna queue free this or destroy this object basically this means that if the position of the power up minus the sprite size is greater than the y coordinate of our viewport then the object will get destroyed so when the power up has reached the bottom of the viewport and has gone out from the viewport is no longer in the screen then the object will get destroyed now what we're going to do is we're going to connect a signal go to the area to the node and then go to the node tab go to the signals and then connect the body entered signals to your script and what this does is it detects if any physics bodies have entered the area to the nodes area uh, before that we're gonna insert the texture of the sprite here let's just insert this random sprite that i got here um, i'll resize this and place it over here and then we are gonna select the collision shape I'll select a rectangle and increase the size of it. Okay, so that's it. And let's just reposition this here. Mm -hmm. All right, we're done. And let's go back to the script now. So the kind of body that we want to detect is a kinematic body 2D. If any kinematic body 2D enters the collision shape of our area 2D node, 
then this signal will notify us. And when it does, we are going to queue free it. Why I set the body type as a kinematic body 2D specifically is because in my player scene, I'm going to add a kinematic body 2D and a collision shape to it. Now, if you want to know how I made this movement or the player, then please watch my touch movement tutorial over here. And now we are going to set the collision shape of this. Let's select a rectangle. Um, let's resize this. And I'll just set it like this. That is fine. Go to our sprite and we'll just modulate this and make it a greenish color. Yeah, that's fine. Now we are done with the power up scene. All right, so now that we are done with the power up scene, we are going to make the power up spawner. So for this, create a new scene and we'll just create a simple node to the here. We're gonna name this power up spawner. So now we're going to add a child node. Let's add a simple node for that. We are going to use this node as a container to store the instances of our polyp scene. Now let's add a timer. This timer will control the spawning times for our polyps. So let's save the scene now. Now let's attach a script to our car up spawner node. All right, so let's create a constant here. Let's name it power up. Let's make it equal to three. It will be preloading the power up scene. Now we need to create a variable here to check if the timer has started or not. And we'll set it to false by default. And let's make this on ready. Now in the process function, we'll set the timer. If the timer started is false, then we'll get our timer node. And then we'll set the wait time to a random float between 1 and 2. And then we will start the timer. So this is the first time the power up will be spawning in a range of 1 to 2 seconds of delay. Now let's set the timer started to true. Now we have to connect the timer's timeout function. After we connect that, we'll randomize this and then we'll create a new variable. A power, let's name it. And this will hold the instance of our power up scene. We cannot use the variables of the power up scene directly because it is a packed scene right now. That's why we need to instance it first. And let's create another variable. That will be the position of the power up. Let's name it a pose. And set it to a uh, vector two. Now we'll set the x coordinate of our power up to a random range between the sprite size of our power up minus let's say 150 pixels and the x coordinate of our viewport we'll use the get viewport dot get visible rect function for that size of x 
and we'll subtract our power ups sprite size again from that and let's add like 50 pixels now we'll set the y coordinate of our power up to 0 minus the sprite size which is a power sprite size minus about 400 pixels so this is gonna make the power up look like as if it's spawning further away from the top of our viewport now we'll set our power ups position to the a close variable that we created just now now we'll get our container that is our node and we will add the power up as its child and then we are going to set the timer again let's get the timer node and we'll set the wait time to a random range of we'll keep it the same or no let's make it 0 0.5 seconds to 2 seconds and then we have to start the timer again now that we are done with the scripting we need to instance our power up spawner in our main scene over here all right so now let's run the scene and see what happens the power up should come anytime oh okay i haven't set the mm, velocity of this i think yeah all right and let's set the sprite size to about 200 and let's make this a bit smaller all right now it should work perfectly fine yep and it even gets destroyed when it touches the kinematic body 2d you can modify your own power up according to your own game so this is how you create power ups in godot there are many other ways to do this but i prefer this way so that is it for this tutorial thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed the video and stay tuned for my upcoming tutorials